Hey everybody, it's Burger Time. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Ring of Vaughn or Resurrected. And uh, we came off of a pretty damn good show. I mean, well, I mean, our first show is better, but it's still massively above average. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, overall, did very good for what we expected to do for what we had on the show. <laughs> I think actually we did pretty damn well. Um, going into the show history here, we could see, uh, obviously we had, uh, Kenta showing up and actually defeating our champion, um, but for the, uh, IWGP US champion, which we might have to fix, um, I gotta go back in there and see if I actually put him in there. I, you know, let's finish this and we'll take a look. Um, Diana and Mercedes having some storyline beats, uh, and obviously we've moved some of our tournament ahead, and we're continuing our uh, explosive fight between Lethal and Joe. Um, so overall, a lot of stuff happening. Not like a lot, a lot, but we're kind of we're limited by time and by how long our matches need to be. But we, we're we're playing around with those. Um, elements where we can and overall we're, we're putting in some pretty decent numbers uh, with what we have we have some new wrestlers that AEW had given us so you know we got uh, Leo Rush which is an odd one for AEW to hire for us but whatever Bobby Flaco we got um, Leon Ruff uh, somewhere in here we got, a, we got a bunch of people we got oddly enough uh, of course uh, where is he? Where's our buddy? <laughs> Where's Razor? I can't I can't avoid the authors of pain. It makes me feel like I should just hire the authors of pain. Um, but maybe do I want to try to bring him in as a singles wrestler? Do we try to bring him in as a tag team? I don't know. I don't know. Um, not sure. Um. We we could hire him, but uh, you know uh, I don't know I don't know. maybe maybe this is his moment to to be a singles competitor and uh, break away from the stigma of the authors of pain. Uh, of course, we got Connor the Wrench Claxton, who was a uh, CZW graduate. So we got some people. Uh, how we're going to utilize them? I don't really know yet. I have some ideas, and certainly you guys have been kind of peppering them in there, but if you guys got some ideas... Oh, and we got Camille. <laughs> I almost forgot. Um, so so a good a good class for our first class of uh, Ring of Honor. But if you have ideas of how we can utilize them, I, I figure, you know, we'll start to pepper them in the, their own stories. Um, we're going to try to see how they are, obviously, based on, you know, what their skill level is. So we, we're going to have to kind of play around with, with trying to develop them, um, try to build characters for them, but ultimately not over relying on them because eventually, even if they're very good, like, like you know, Leah Rush is a very good wrestler. Um, not really a, a dude that I would, I would think of when I think of Ring of Honor, but he's here. Um, but certainly someone that we could utilize to have a very good match, especially if it's a, a high spots match. Um, but we don't want to be over reliant because at any time he's on developmental. And just like that, you know, AEW can snatch him right up, and uh, he's not ours anymore. So that's something we're going to have to be aware of as we kind of go forward. Now, I do want to go in here. I feel like I fixed it. I did fix it. Okay, good. Really had no idea why it had a weight limit um, for this title. And, you know, people were talking about it back and forth. I saw some discussion over whether it really should have been a heavyweight title at all or whether you know kenta's technically a heavyweight or he's being treated like a heavyweight so like that's fine i to me if they if they're kayfaving the weight class already and saying that he is a heavyweight then we should just remove the restriction completely and ignore it so that that is sort of where we stand there uh <laughs> that, that's kind of how i want to run that um i don't know how often we'll bring that title in because we also have the pure champion for however long wheeler yuda keeps it um in in 
my first test of the save. This title very quickly was given to somebody else by AEW. So um, I'm kind of shocked to see Wheeler still holding out on it. Um, and of course, we have Adam Cole and the the Bucks here as uh, our six man. So maybe something we do with them uh, going forward. Basically, why we have these belts, and I know I've re I'm going to reiterate it but for those that, that are just new to watching this, um, we get a free pass. We can just use these guys whenever we want. I mean, Wheeler we can because he's on our roster, um, and the Bucks too are on our roster. But basically, we can use these dudes for as much as we want. Um, no limit, no trading needed. We just have to pay the fee. Um, but now that I say that, I don't know how that works when we're in debt. So we'll definitely have to try and see uh, how that works. And that might be something we have to be aware of, that uh, we're, we're, we're still going to be limited based on if we have money. And we don't have capital because we're a development company. So we got to make money and then burn the money. We'll, we'll see how that works. Um, maybe perhaps I'll try that and bring an Adam Cole to the show and see, uh, see if that works at all. Um, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's get to the show. Hopefully nothing crazy happens in the four days between it, but you never know. Uh, so I'll catch you guys on the flip in a second. All right. Um, nothing crazy happening in our news, which is good. Anything happening here in the world, though? Not really. Uh, Brandy Rhodes is retiring, and that's about it. Um... Uh, apparently Xavier Woods and Frightmare are sharing things on social media. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of odd, but uh, Dan Severn's retiring. Yeah, not, not really much going on in the world here, um, which is fine. But uh, yeah, so we have a show tonight. We've kicked it back to cheap or very cheap um, ticket prices. So we should be getting a little bit of money from our ticket sales. As you saw, we made about two grand from the last one. It's not a lot, uh, but it's a little bit. But we are getting a pretty decent broadcaster revenue per show, about like 20K a show, uh, which is pretty good. Sponsors, we're going to tap out probably about 125 to 150. So overall, it's not horrible. We are paying a lot of money on production costs um and we're still not you know we're, we're nxt's taking the leap up here um to try to one-up us uh for the most part we are at or above we're above uh most people we could probably kick it down one next month um and be safe it really depends on hbo's standard so minimum production quality we can't go lower than this can't go lower than that can't go lower than that so we could go lower on live experience and do small um which would cost us twenty five hundred dollars a show versus right now seventy five hundred a show so that's a it's a nice chunk of change might be an option for us um Currently, let's see, uh, live event experience. So, so far of all of our rivals, um, nobody is as large of an event experience as, as us, except for NXT, who is beating us. So we don't really need to worry about that. And then we could easily go down one and um, be fine. And we might as well just do it now, honestly. Um you don't really get a bonus, as far as I understand, for beating other people. They just get penalties. So there's really no reason to waste the money if someone else already spent money to have a larger experience than us. Um, it's when we have multiple people that are uh, branching out that and that could really hurt us because I think you get a penalty per person up to like a certain percentage. So it, it doesn't really help us at all. Um, in our rating, it only helps us in our competition against others. So in a, a course correction to save some money, I think that's a pretty um, a pretty good way to do it. I think that's fine. We'll take some penalties on the production, and, and that's 
that was going to happen regardless. So we might as well just save some money on it. Um, all right, let's go ahead. Let's see what the show has in store for us. We are going to be in the mid-Atlantic, apparently. Um, is that the best spot for us? Is that where we're at? I think Tri-State is usually our home base. Um, Mid-Atlantic actually might be where we're located. Um, I can't remember where this is actually, where, where our home territory is. Um, home region of Mid-Atlantic. So that is our Mid-Atlantic region, is our home territory. We are trying to get that 59, but trying to get to that medium size. We, we have a long time to develop it, but um, certainly something we're going to want to develop very quickly. Um, Tri-State is a better performer for us, but I think for our for the sake of what we're trying to do, I think uh, trying to build up our home territory with some um, some more shows would be smart. We're only getting 248 fans here. So <laughs> we're not going to get a lot of people. Uh, we're going to pick the best option, which apparently is the Civic Center, uh, which is exactly 250 people. So, you know, it's what it is. Um, it's a tiny show, but that's fine. That's, that's, that's the state of what we are. So, oh well. Um, no backstage incidents, which is kind of crazy. No absent wrestlers, which is also kind of crazy. So it gives us an opportunity to meddle. Um, what do we want to do? Is really an. It's really a good question. Um, sh sure. We have a strong friendship, Bandito and Willow. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right, we got a show to put on. We got to get going on this tournament. We got probably going to get two matches done. I think we're going to do Lee Moriarty and Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. Get that match done, and I think we'll even get. Daniel Garcia versus Dalton Castle. Um, so then we'll only have to figure out whoever's going to beat um, whoever's going to beat the other one here in uh, this match to face Wheeler Yuta and uh, get down towards the finals and uh, hopefully have a pretty good top prospects tournament. Remember, the winner of this tournament gets a title shot of their choice, excluding any titles that they own. So if Wheeler Yuta wins and he's still pure champion, he cannot obviously fight himself. So he would have to pick another one. Um, but that they have a huge opportunity to make a big star for themselves. All right, um, 90 minutes. We got five minute over, over run time here that we can have. So let's go ahead and let's try to maximize all the time we can use. And uh, hopefully put on a pretty good show. We're aiming for over 50. I want to try to beat that 57. Let's see if we can do it. Catch you guys on the flip. All right, guys. We got a full 95 minutes and three pre-show matches. It's a very short show. It's always hard to book these hour and a half match shows. In fact, I, I almost want to get a two-hour show at some point if we can convince... HBO to let it happen. We'll have to see if they ever will let us extend it um, because just having to do 20 minute matches really limits us with uh, how much story we can add to it. But I think we advanced some stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and let's see what a Ring of Honor has in store for us today. So, starting that pre show off, uh, trying to build up Gates of Agony a little bit, trying to see what they're capable of while testing out some of our newer wrestlers. Um, and it's okay. I mean, it, again, it's a segment that does not matter. It's in the pre-show, so it really, it, it could it could stink completely, and it's nothing for us. Uh, but Toa Leona is pairing well with Tully Blanchard. Tully Blanchard is working good on the backstage. Toa Leona has a 32, which isn't horrible. And Quan has a 47, actually doing quite well. Um... 37 for Jimmy Lloyd, and 36 for Brandon Watts. So actually pretty decent enhancement talent for us. Um, unfortunately, the match is only like a 22. It doesn't do very much for us at all. Um, but well, overall, you know, there's some talent here that we could utilize. Um, we have Camille versus Willow Nightingale. And eh, um, Camille's at a 29. I was hoping she would be a little bit higher, like a mid-30s. Um, but Willow is doing okay, 42. If we can get her more popular and boost her up, we might have a 
uh, potential upper mid Carter for our women's division. Uh, only problem is that her actual stats are not great. Um, most of her actual wrestling stats are very low. Um, so that's difficult for a promotion like us that's heavily focused on in-ring work. But still, that said, a 42 is not a bad base. Um, so, and it ends up being a 39 for the match, not too bad. In the match, in 11 minutes, Willow defeats Camille. Eh, it's not bad. Tony Nice versus Connor the Wrench Claxton. Um, uh, Connor's not great. Uh, 28. Tony Nice doing a solid 51. I'm pretty confident we could put Tony Nice pretty much anywhere on the card and he'll be okay outside of maybe the main event. But I could see him doing, actually, I, I, I take that back. I could see him de- doing some main event stuff and doing fairly well. Uh, he's never going to be the draw, but he's going to be a solid hand. And we see that very clearly with his in-ring performance here. Um, going to be a good asset for developing uh, wrestlers like this and uh, being able to just put him into storylines uh, to to put in some good numbers, some good work. So happy to see that. A little disappointed to see that Connor only got a 28, though. Uh, was hoping for a little bit more. He has a pretty good technical ability. So I thought putting these two together would be the best shot. Uh, that said, it's a very short match. Well, short-ish, 11 minutes. So maybe they didn't really have enough time. Maybe with a technical master class, they could have done something more. I kind of doubt it, though. Um, but that said, 44 is not too bad. And that brings us on to the actual show where we have our six-man tag team match uh, or six-man six, six tag team title being defended, Adam Cole and the Young Bucks do show up uh, fighting Billy Gunn and the Gun Club, um, which is our only other six-man group at the moment. Well, that's not true. We have the foundation, too, for for now. Uh, <laughs> but in this, very clearly, Adam Cole and the Young Bucks are going to defeat the Gun Club. It's 19 minutes um, and make defense number one of the title. I, what do you expect? They did great. That's what you're going to expect out of them. Uh, we got a 66 despite Austin and Colton and Billy Gunn all performing pretty poorly because Adam Cole and Matt and Nick Jackson can really work and perform. And as long as we have them as a six-man team, we, we, we pretty much can use Adam Cole whenever we want. So kind of an interesting element of being able to bring him in for storylines. But we begin by the show by utilizing them letting them have a good defense and a good match. Uh, Afterwards, of course, as we would expect from them, uh, Billy Gunn goes to shake Adam Cole's hand, and Cole shakes it, but then pulls him in and then scoop slams him under the ground. The Bucks attack the brother's brother's gun, uh, beating him up on the ringside and throwing him out of the ring before going up to Billy Gunn and beating him up some more, grabbing him by the uh, arms to get in position and giving him a BTE trigger before Adam Cole charges at him with that running knee of his. Uh, Adam Cole grabs the mic. The fans are booing. The the fan favorites are dishonorable. What's going on? And he addresses the camera only and just says, we are home, before throwing the mic away and um, leaving the disgraceful scene. Uh, This does okay. It's a 44. Colton Gunn uh, was trying to sell out there and did very badly. Um, got the crowd hotter though, so that's kind of what we wanted. Uh, and we feed that hot crowd into a really good match. Really happy. This is one of our hot prospects, the last on the other side of the tournament bracket here. We got Hot Sauce Tracy Williams versus Lee Moriarty. And in this match, we had a good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Uh, in 16 minutes, Tracy Williams defeats Lee Moriarty. Uh, after getting a submission with a Texas Cloverleaf um, and then advancing into the top prospects uh, semifinals, I guess, and or quarterfinals, having to now face uh, Wheeler Yuta. So Tracy had a 57, Lee Moriarty had a 51, giving an interesting thing because Tracy Williams and Wheeler Yuta used to be tag team partners. So uh, tag team partners are now facing each other in the semis. Um, we'll see if that comes into play. 
And overall, the segment rating was fantastic. So very happy with that. Less happy, but still not too bad. We have a promo, um, a video package for Mercedes Martinez, who is uh, going to be challenging Diana Perosa in the next pay-per-view for the championship. Uh, we have a video of her in her garage, and she's practicing against a punching bag, just you know, laying in fists. She's got her hands all wrapped up in tape, and you know, acting tough. Um, and she starts listing her accolades as she's punching. So it's Rise, Shimmer, NWA Midwest, Shine, NCW, WXW. For twenty years, I wrestled the best in the world all around the world and I came out on top and I have the trophies and I have the scars to prove it but despite all those accolades I never really received the attention of those accolades Diana thinks it's a sign of weakness that that makes me a lesser wrestler but it's not because what Diana doesn't understand is she's just another one of these privileged few they got everything she wanted handed to her. From the moment she trained, everyone just bent down to her will. And everything, she, you know, everything that she wanted just given to her. You know, just for her looks or her charm or, you know, her starting line. Well, I started at the bottom. Rock bottom. And I had to fight at the bottom to survive fight for every little meager thing I ever earned in this career. And that's why she needs to be deadly afraid because she might not see me as a threat because she's really needs to because she's not going to get into the ring with a fighter or a brawler or a wrestler. She's getting into the ring with a survivor and for survivors, there is no win. There is no second place. You live or you die. And with a final strike, dramatically, she destroys the punching bag's leather wall, having hit it so hard repeatedly that it just weakened, allowing uh, you know, the dramatic release of a stream of sand coming out, um, very evocative of a, a fatal blow, as she kind of walks away. So, you know, Mercedes is saying basically Diana was handed everything in her life where she is. She thinks that her privilege basically in her popularity is indicative of her skill. And Mercedes is going to uh, show her that that's very, very much not the case. Uh, so we gain heat for our storyline between the two. Unfortunately, Mercedes is not a great speaker, so we're kind of down to 41. She does serviceable, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, but we do build the heat. That is always what's important as we kind of continue that storyline. And now we got Daniel Garcia versus Dalton Castle. Um, this match is okay. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more out of it, to be honest. But it looks like Daniel Garcia was a little off his game. Um, and fans were turned off by the finish of the match. Um, yeah, I could see that. And uh, it was a little too short. So we got some... Um, we definitely got, got some penalties here. Uh, we had to do a shorter match. We literally could not fit everything we needed to do. But that is what it is. Uh, Daniel Garcia defeats Dalton Castle in 15 minutes by submission with a sharpshooter uh, after Dalton Castle is distracted and interfered with by Joe Hendry. Um, so... Dalton does not take a clean loss, but Daniel Garcia does move on in the top prospects tournament. Um, so it'll be whoever is left between Wheeler Yuta and uh, Tracy Williams versus now Daniel Garcia for the hot prospects tournament. Uh, Dalton had a 51. Daniel Garcia had a 45. Gives us a 45 altogether. Afterwards, we just kind of point out the uh, Joe Hendry moment of sneaking out of nowhere and attacking Castle while a ref was distracted, letting the audience really lay into him um, and then leaving him exposed for the uh, application of the sharpshooter. 
Dalton Castle did very good. We actually lost heat with this segment, unfortunately. I might have to look at Joe Hendry's skill set and see why this went so poorly. So we'll probably do that off air um, because I I know where he should be. And sometimes um, with these mods, uh, if a mod maker really doesn't know the person, they very much undervalue him. And I have a suspicion that that might be the case here. Or maybe I'm overvaluing him. But I'm for fairly sure, I'm fairly certain Joe Hendry should get pretty decent uh, charisma or acting ratings. Not maybe the best, but there's no reason why a Dalton Castle Joe Hendry segment should get a 35, uh, let's just say. In our main event, uh, which does okay, I kind of expect a little bit more here, uh, but we, we guess we got penalized for something, but it's a superb match. Uh, Samoa Joe defeats Swerve Strickland in 19 minutes by submission. Uh, both of them had pretty great in-ring work. 59 for Joe, 61 for Swerve. I'm guessing we just kind of burnt the crowd out a bit. Taking a look to see if we see anything. Uh, no, nothing really in here that's telling us anything specific. But ends with a 55. I was really hoping closer towards that 60 range. Um, afterwards, we have a uh, interesting but different segment to end Samoa Joe's journey here. Uh, even though Gresham, despite not saying anything, struggles to follow a script uh, without following a script. We have Gresham, for the first time in a while, coming out. You know, he lost a big match last time, but he's still Ring of Honor champion. And he kind of eyes out Samoa Joe as Joe's standing in the ring. And, you know, he's looking at Joe. And Joe looks at him. And then Joe looks at his title. Then Gresham looks at his title. And he points at his title. And Joe kind of nods at him. And Jonathan kind of nods at him. And they both kind of smirk. And we basically pretty much have a match. You know, it's kind of an interesting thing because obviously Jay Lethal has been having this tension with, well, not tension, this, this outright hatred for Samoa Joe. Um, as a member of Foundation, Gresham seemingly kind of absent from all of that and seemingly cordial to Joe. Like, this is a very respectful show of respect, which respectful show of respect, yes. Uh, a respectful showing from our champion, kind of saying, hey, man, we got it. We should go, right? We should fight. And, and Joe kind of giving him that due respect back as champion um, and kind of calling it out here that, that this should be a match. And uh, it's kind of interesting because it doesn't feel like while rest of the foundation is, is in lockstep with Jay Lethal, Gresham's kind of doing his own thing. Um, and that's kind of interesting. We have to kind of see how that's going to play out. We gain heat for the cracks in the foundation here, and we uh, get us 52. I think we're going to get about a 54 for this show, which will be pretty good and be pretty middle. 52 was a little little bit less than I thought, but um, you know, overall, it was pretty consistent. I would have liked a lot higher. Not sure what happened there in the main event to only get us a 55, but i um, very disappointed in some of this stuff. Mostly that, that Daniel Garcia Dalton Castle match was kind of a bummer. Um, just kind of thought it would do a little bit better. I kind of expected the Elite uh, destroying the gun club here to just kind of do, you know, a 66. Well, just a 66. I kind of expected that to be pretty good. Maybe that should have been our main event. That might have been a better um, positioning and we probably would have got a higher score. But say la vie, that is how it is. All right, uh, let's see what we have here. Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, that is, um, that, that is, that is a story. Uh, trailers from popular men's magazine, web, web, men's website. It's revealed that Jay Cargill has done a nude photo shoot for them and we'll be releasing the photos soon. Um, well, yeah, okay. That would indeed create a lot of interest. Um, Bob Holly's retiring. That surprise, he's not retired yet and safe. Um, and then Sierra is dating, who cares? Nothing else in the news notable. Uh, Sean Waltman retiring again, kind of expected. So not much, kind of shocked at that. We had 387,000 viewers on the television on HBO Max. That's not too bad. Um... Kind of financially not horrible. We're definitely losing money per show, but 
we're not doing bad. Again, about 20K per broadcast revenue and about 2K or so per show and ticket sales. As long as those sponsorships kick back in, it's not too bad. And we learned something really good today, which was that despite being in the negative, um, we can still hire despite it having a cost. Um, it does have a fee to, to you know, loan out and borrow the title. But overall, um, didn't seem like it mattered. It seemed like it just kind of got folded into our debt, uh, which is good because Normally, if you try to do a loan, a, a proposed an alliance loan, I don't think it lets you because you don't have the money for it, right? Um, so you can't just like go into your debt and, and give them an IOU, which is kind of a shame. <laughs> so not bad. We got one other episode of Ring of Honor Wrestling before our pay per view, so I'm I'm pretty excited to see what we can do before our pay-per-view, but I think we pretty much have our pay-per-view lined up. So I'm pretty excited to see it. I'm very excited to see what the hell um, this looks like, right? So we got Daniel Garcia waiting in the wings, and then Wheeler Yuta versus Tracy Williams. Uh, the tag team has to fight. The winner is going to be facing Daniel Garcia, um, and I could see any of those three as a combination being pretty damn fun should give us a good score but also that's going to be a very interesting for our uh top prospects of who who challenges who once they uh once they they win right uh what title will be fought for and who will have that title very exciting stuff but that'll be for another day thank you guys for joining me i'll see you next time